<laughs> hey, Rob, thanks for coming back on. Uh, you're, God, you're being a regular. How did I allow this to happen? What did I do wrong? But no, you, you I want to do this one because I've been talking about this of uh, I've been in real estate for 25 years. So I have a decent experience. I've owned 25 properties at least. Been through this. I've been through three boom bus cycles. And I keep hearing in the media, this one's different. I've heard this before. And I've warned people, I've done these economic updates. And we did one. We recently did one, but we could only touch on the housing. So I wanted to do one dedicated to understanding the housing bubble because you've been talking about on your show, which uh, about uh, property taxes and how they're, they're theft. And I totally agree. I've been dealing with this. I sold my last house uh, for a couple of reasons, but one of them was they tripled my property taxes on me last year out of nowhere. They reassessed it, wasn't up for reassessment. They were reassessing everyone to try and bilk everyone. And they tripled mine. And I went, you know, they could only raise it so much per year. But the problem is, I knew it was going to incrementally go up to the maximum every single year till they got to that point before they ever thought about reducing it. So I want to dive into how, how they build these housing bubbles, because it's kind of a similar pattern every time, because these bubbles are built upon, they're not built upon real supply and demand. They are, and they aren't, it, it's artificial. They, they generate it. A bunch of people get rich off it. It's not us. We're always the losers in these bubbles and they generate them. I want to prove to people and walk them through how this happened, that they do this on purpose. Yeah. So it's interesting. This new one, the major driver of this most recent housing bubble, in my opinion, and this is based on multiple real estate people that I've talked to about this. And as we talked about in a previous episode, I spent two years buying a house is that there was so much money in the economy and corporations were able to get their hands on a whole bunch of it. And most importantly, because of the Federal Reserve working in cahoots with the federal government, they cut interest rates to where they were so low. The corporations entered in a mass scale into the housing uh, purchase game. And so what I mean by that is uh, a rich guy who's got multiple uh, heirs, children, he could leave the money to them, and then he pays risk paying an inheritance tax, depending on when he dies, who's in charge, et cetera. Or he could take that money, and he could start a corporation, and he could put his kids on the board or his ne nephews or sons-in-laws, daughters-in-laws, whatever, on this corporation board, and then they start buying real estate. And when they buy the real estate, that money that they spend on the, on the real estate is a tax write-off. And the only money that comes through that could be taxed is the money that goes to the profit, the rent, because now it becomes a renter home versus an owner home. And that money then is passed along to the kids. And there's ways you can do that in a sense that would limit the tax burden. And so now you have massive corporations competing against regular people to buy homes and regular people are almost always going to lose. And well, what some people don't know either is that some of these corporations are Chinese corporations. China has been buying real estate in the U.S. for a couple of decades now, and they've they've highly kind of upped their their purchase power. Now they're buying farms, which everyone should be scared to death that they're buying farmland. China is buying a ton, hundred, hundreds of thousands of acres of farmland in the U.S. We need to be scared. Now, now, the, so then the issue now, as you talk about the boom and bust, is now the interest rates are on the rise. A lot of these corporations have said, we've gobbled up a bunch of real estate. It only worked if we were paying you know, 2% interest. And now that the interest rate is five, five and a half going up, they're getting out. So now there's all this, you know, all these people who overpaid for these properties. If the value goes down because fewer people want the properties, the problem you got now is, the rent is there's going to be a rental crisis, which we yes, can get into, I'm sure, absolutely. in a minute. Yes. But I remember when I was in college, my first job in college, uh, oh, su summer job in college was I worked uh, for a masonry company that did uh, foundations for homes. And that was 2003, which was when the last housing yep. uh, boom was beginning, right? And I remember the time we were building homes and I would ask because we, we were doing like three or four slabs a day. And I, I, I asked my foreman one time, I was like, who is going to live in this many homes? And he goes, they haven't been sold yet. So why would you build a home and not sell it? Because they know they will sell it. Speckling. And I said, that's, yeah. that's insanity to do that. And so it's a different reason. But again, it comes back to 
in that case, then the government forced banks to give people favorable or they viewed as favorable access into homes. The loans obviously ended up not being favorable. But in this case, it was the government, again, creating an interest rate in which mega corporations could get into the housing business. Well, and it, it, it originally started the last two booms. The I was fairly young when I went through the first boom. I was a teenager. I think I was in, was I in college? No, I was out of college, but I was too young. I didn't, I hadn't gotten into the housing market yet. Cause guess what, Rob? I know this is going to sound crazy. I couldn't afford it. <laughs> Go figure that. I couldn't afford to buy a house because I didn't have the income level to afford a house yet. And with this one, the, the, why this one is going to be so devastating. And I've warned people. And that's why I wanted to bring you on because you recently bought a property. I've sold property. I sold all my real estate. I had this. I bought this prior to COVID. So I did really well. I built a property during the biggest manipulation of the real estate market that I've been alive for. And I did it for pennies on the dollar compared to what everyone's paying. I still was able to do it. It was more expensive than I would have, but I've been through this before. So I'm trying to teach people what to look out for and not to impulse buy. It started, this one started, and I warned people about the $15 an hour minimum wage. I flat out said on my podcast and interviews I did, I said, this is not realistic. I went, a, a living wage is not meant to be minimum wage. It never has been, it never will be. When I grew up as a kid, I was able to be employed by small mom and pops because I was affordable. I was what they could afford. I had no skills. I was an idiot. I was an idiot for many years as a low income wage earner. That's what it was, right? I never intended or never expected to be able to buy a home on anything close to minimum wage. That's reality. What they did this time is I noticed what they did is they boosted the minimum wage because I did the numbers on it. I talked about it that 40 hours a week at $15 an hour is $31,200 a year. If now you have two people doing that, you're in the $60,000 range a year with no skills, no tangible skills whatsoever. You're the bottom of the barrel worker. Now you can afford to get in the housing market. They did this on purpose. I think they knew this is how you start the next bubble. They started doing it. And then from there, they hit the perfect storm because then COVID hit. Now people looked at their houses and went, oh, I really like my house a lot because I'm in it 24 seven. Then with the states with the really ridiculous lockdowns and restrictions pushed people who were freedom, like freedom and like living their life, pushed them into another real estate, pushed them out of that real estate market, pushed them into other real estate markets. Now people started moving. Then with COVID, you had remote working. Now that opened it up even more. So this whole progression of how this thing kicked in, and then we had interest rates down to zero. So all the financial institutions, even though they're only charging two and a half, three percent, they're getting their money for free. Their money they're loaning out is zero money as far as them. It's costing them nothing. Just imagine if you could run your business on borrowed money that was free that you didn't have to pay interest on. <laughs> imagine that. Yeah, and we talked about this in the previous episode. I would not yeah. have bought this house if I didn't have several. And we laid all them out about why yeah. I bought this Go back and house. listen to that one. Yeah, the, the benefit that I had to, to do that. But I would have never bought a home if all of those things hadn't gone uh right for me because there is uh one the prices are still inflated and two when you factor in the interest and isn't it amazing gary that every time there's a crisis big government big business always does well and the people always do worse and how many times is it how many times does it have to happen man yeah i know and i said this at the beginning of covid because i worked in this industry. I, I used to work at the high level of the FDA and HHS for years and years as an investigator. When it busted out, I knew how these drug companies and these players work in the government. I know how these agencies work. I worked in them. I said, you're about to see the biggest transfer of wealth you've ever seen. I went, I know what they're up to. I know what they're thinking. At first I was worried. And then I went, no, this is, this is cause we've seen enough red herrings on the, the pandemic uh, threat. How for the last 15 years, we've been told between the bird flu, you know, the, the, 
the pig, the pig flu, this flu, that flu, everyone's going to die. So they'd been ramping us up for this. You know, they'd been working us to make sure. And it just happened to be a perfect storm. Well, one thing with this housing crisis, what they did too, is they played it perfectly in a sense of, because you hear this one's, this is their, the financial industry and the real estate industry. They keep saying this one's different because there's way more demand than there is houses. And I go, "Ah, no, 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 no. You manipulated that. 